Today on Car Traction, you join me in Ned the Shed, a phrase I've said many, many times, but today I'll be pioneering a new phrase, Fred the Shed. You may notice in here it is getting very, very busy, it's all very cluttered up, and a lot of you, or a few of you, have been calling for an extra little shed to go along the side of Ned the Shed here. So in today's video, we're going to be looking at how the shed's got here, the actual shed itself, and what I plan to do with the shed. So let's just have a little look at what's been going on recently. It's slowly going up, Ned's new brother, Fred the Shed. So there we go, Ned the Shed now has company. New shed, it's 7 by 5 we could have gone a little bit longer, but it just fits in there quite neatly, next to Ned. So this is Fred the Shed and I'm sure Harley will give us a proper walk around and talk about his plans very very soon but he's still at school so I'm afraid you have to put up with me just for this brief moment of the video there. I'm sure he'll put that to very good use. So here is my new beautiful shed. Let's have a little look inside. You can tell this has only been here for one day because it is extremely clean. Anyone who's seen Ned the Shed and the stuff going on in there knows that these places get a bit dirty, don't they? So this is my brand new shed. And the idea of this is to be a little bit of a sort of workshop place. Now, Ned the Shed is where all the sort of automobilia goes and the memorabilia, and I've got a big display going on. And the idea is to have a similar sort of thing in here. So I've just got a couple of my lovely old bits of automobilia here, a couple of petrol cans, just to sort of get an idea of roughly what I'm doing. But the idea of this is, is that Ned the Shed is where I display all of my lovely old car bits. And here is where I restore this upon this not quite so beautiful but very practical old table. We got this earlier this morning from a shop near the Hopley House which is where they do the little car meet. It's a great old sort of leather top table from a, desk, a house. Isn't it? It's a desk isn't it? But now it's been repurposed into a great old workbench. We're going to put this vice on it and this is where I'm going to restore all of my future lovely items and then I'll display a few in here and I'll also display a few into um, Ned the Shed as this is Fred the Shed here. I'd like to get into sort of slightly bigger things like buying stuff like when it's in not very good condition and doing it up a little bit for a bit of display. So it's all very exciting in the future. And before I sort of go into any more depth, I want to say a massive, massive thank you to all you people behind the screen there because without all the YouTube, this wouldn't have been possible. So yes, a massive, massive thank you for everyone there, liking, commenting, subscribing, looking at the channel homepage to fund these great new projects. So in this familiar old shed, you can see we've got a brilliant mixture of sort of petrol cans, visual display items, and then tools such as this saw. And the idea of this is to have this one as the more display things, like the sort of bulb boxes and a few tins. And then I'll take some of the old spanners and some of the oil cans here, some of the sort of a couple of the little signs, maybe the saws, the drills. I've got so, so many drills, maybe a couple of these signs, oil pourers, basically the stuff that you'd see in like an old garage environment. And then I will transfer that into Fred the Shed over here because this is going to be a working place. So I will try and make it sort of quite sort of visually pleasing if you get what I mean with a few sort of old things dotted around there will be a lot more and then this video is all going to be about the transformation of this from a boring shed as if anyone were going to put in some boring garden equipment or something but no we're going to be putting exciting things in restoring old things in here that's a nice vice it is a nice vice <coughs> this is from dad mm. I believe he was going to put it in the Dodge or something for some reason, but no, it's going to get used here. It's a proper old one, isn't it? So what we're going to do is sacrilegiously drill a hole into this desk. Don't worry, it's already got paint all over it. Somebody's already beaten us to it. So number three. There you go, record maybe? Yeah, probably, but it doesn't say so. Hey, you need to be careful not to scratch my beautiful new table. Well, someone's clearly used it for mixing paint and things on, so it's not like we're desecrating some fine <laughs> bit of... Uh, 18th century furniture. It's just an old desk. Yeah, uh, and you've got your stool in here. It fits absolutely beautifully. Just Can't even slide my hand in there. Yeah, perfect. And then I've got all these storage spaces. So this is going to be a working environment. So I'm going to have like all my spanners and stuff. And this is from the 1950s. This was your great <laughs> grandmother's. This came from her house. Very very neat. It is too. Look at that. How cool. That is, is that? a nice thing, isn't that it? It is a nice thing. Nice and original. Yeah. So that's been in the family from new since the 1950s. Be careful on my desk. 
don't want to scratch it, do we? So yeah, this is actually a really handy bit of furniture because it's got the storage thing. So like when I'm sort of restoring things, I use ugly tools as I call them, yeah. like this. Modern, boring looking. Exactly. So the idea of this is that can go in there. Hide them. We can hide them away, and then maybe around here I'll display some of the old tools because old tools are a little bit better. They're a lot sturdier, they're a lot more hard wearing, and they're really, really nice to use. So, I'm going to have a few drills, a few saws hanging here. Basically, in this video, you're going to see all of the customization going on Lots in Fred spiders. the Shed. Lots of spiders. Not, Not yet, yet. Not yet no. but I'm sure these little areas here will become populated yes. with the little fellas very, very soon. Mm -hmm. The winter home. Fast forward an hour of furious sorting. Most of the spanners that could be used for actual work are out of Ned and they are in Fred and what I've done if I sit on my lovely little stool I've categorised them very very neatly so just take a look at this in here we've got sanding related things and an allen key for some reason because I don't have that many allen keys here we've got some spanners that are sort of average size but a little bit bigger than average size it's always useful to have so many spanners these are some more average size spanners they're all sort of categorized by size so they're all in similar groups and there's my last group oh, the camera stuff keeps getting in the way there's my last group of similarly sized spanners those are probably going to be the most useful so they're all down the left moving over to the right we have my small spanner collection which is probably going to be even more useful to be honest for the smaller things that I'm restoring in here the vice has yet to be mounted that'll be mounted on there in this one if it'll come out this has got pliers snips and wrenches all crammed in there very very useful items especially a good set of pliers and this one is where I put all my WD-40 cans most of them are empty unfortunately this one is not quite finished yet this has got some sort of branded spanners all my Jaguar spanners here Austin Nissan stuff like that really I haven't found anywhere to put my screwdrivers yet so that's something I need to do and in here are my biggest spanners so these I probably won't need to use that often so that's why they're in a toolbox rather than as close to hand as the others but there you are all my simply massive spanners so it's all very very neat in here and I'm doing all the sort of categorizing and organizing things in here because this is going to be where I restore stuff and the priority is that I know what everything is so before I start doing anything sort of aesthetic like that I've got to make sure everything is organized in this lovely old desk well we're reaching the end of our first day with the shed and we've made some fantastic progress we've got all my lovely old screwdrivers here the handicraft tool set and also a beautiful set of old pliers I love those so much so those are also kind of on display there I've got my little Fisk tyres sign there first aid case that's got some ugly modern screwdrivers in it none of this is sort of permanent this is me just placing a few items just to got trying to get an idea I've got a new boat in that's full of screws and stuff I've got that petrol can there don't know whether that will stay there that's got my massive spanners in it I've hung up a load of lovely old drills which actually do work these three have got drill bits this one's probably my favorite it's getting a bit dark now that's got flopped on it saw there my lovely spirit level there then I put my beautiful Michelin sign there so I think that looks pretty pretty good there it's a bit dark isn't it and it's still sort of a bit higgledy piggledy this is only the first day of probably weeks of arranging little things and perfecting things but it's certainly a big step and now that we've got the main sort of furniture in we can really sort of tailor everything else around this because the idea is that I get the furniture in and then I start putting all my trinketry and all my sort of important spanners and things so yep a great first day in the creation and customization of Fred the Shed just drilling at the moment festive drilling festive drilling Okay, so the plan is to mount, you know, we're just going to mount the drill onto this old desk. The bearings on the drill are sounding a little bit dry, but yeah, not to worry. Right, so we'll get a bigger drill bit and just open those up a bit now. So. 
slow and steady wins the race new old sign installed speed limit 15 miles per hour it's been a busy few days here in Fred the Shed and there's been quite a lot going on so I think now I'll just give you a bit of an update as to what's happened. I've got all my lovely old drills somewhere in the darkness along here. These are all usable, they've all got different sized drill bits apart from that one which is why they're all there. This one is an especially nice working drill that's really sort of lovely old thing. Then I've got a couple of signs, that Vela set one is a repro sign then I've got a Pierce Arrow little pedal car sign. This one's a bit older but I still think it is a repro but it, they just look quite good there. Got a couple of saws those are good there because I actually use them. I'm sorry, the camera is not very good in low light at all. On this side, I've got my fan belt, which is just there to sort of look cool because that's the sort of thing you'd see in a garage. I might change that eventually. And I've got another lovely old saw. I really, really like that one. Over here, we've got the Michelin sign. I think that looks great. I've got my spirit level. We've got a lamp that I've just temporarily clamped up there got a big drill here, I might hang up a few more drills perhaps around here because I've got loads and loads of these big drills. I've got my Kenlight road menders lamp, that one looks really cool there, I've got an adjustable spanner hanging there, I've got my big spanners there and then this is where most of the changes have been, I've got my beautiful handicraft tool set where I put all my sort of little wooden tools, I really really love that and these I do actually use, it's got some of my favourite things in the collection including this sort of dual twisting screwdriver so you flick that up that way and it twists that way and it's effectively effectively becomes like a wrench and then the other way it becomes a wrench the other way lovely quality tick tick sound and in the middle it's just a normal screwdriver that's a really nice quality old tool I think and I've got some of my sort of similar wooden tools in this lovely old toolbox. I really, really love that. Got a nice little Lake and Elliot Jack here. I really like that as well. I got that's got my sort of the Nubo tin has got my sort of nails and self tapping screws. Couple of grease guns here, those are two of my favourites. Fuel pump repair kit, another little Nubo tin, a little oil can, an actual tape measure that does actually work, so it is a handy thing to have. And then here I've got a few beautiful old oil cans, definitely the sort of thing that you'd see in a garage environment in the sort of 40s, 50s. Got all my Austin and Ford branded spanners in there with that lovely Humber spanner. And then another lovely oil can here and a few more things. A few more oil cans here, these ones are actually my users, these are more for display. These ones do have oil. Okay, it's a bit of a windy day today. Hopefully I can just hold that open and we'll be able to see something. Oil cans, got a couple of little tins in here. My Ferodo brake shoes once again, garage item. A couple of oil cans, jerry can here and some roll plugs. So yeah, I think my little bookcase there looks absolutely fantastic with all the old little tools and bits and bobs in it. I will put up a couple more signs because I've got quite a few more signs in Ned the Shed over there. And I may put something up here. I found this old Fisk tyres sign, which is very, very rough, but I do quite like it, which might go there. It hasn't got any holes in it, well, it's got plenty of holes in it, but not holes. So I might end up drilling a hole in that in there. I mean, it is kind of sacrilege, but it is a very, very sort of wrecked old sign. It's very, very rusty. Came with one of Dad's ear to the I think. I think that looks quite good there. So today I might put a couple of holes in that. These drills probably aren't beefy enough. Might get a proper drill for that. And that could be hung up there, which looks quite nice. Spooky lamp. Hopefully that should do. And for my first project in here, we've got this lovely little triangle trike. This is from Dad. What sort of age do you think that is? 40s, 50s, 60s? I don't know, but it's got some wonderful pattern on it. I've just been going over it with a wire brush and I've just oiled up the seat, which is the main thing, and it just looks lovely, doesn't it? I've also done the back of the seat there. Haven't done anything about this. It's got some sort of weird, like, there's no sort of handle here for the pedals as there is one here, so I don't know what to do about that. I'll oil all this up because it's a bit squeaky. I don't know what that is for. Hmm. But yeah, basically, I'm just going to go over this one with a bit of the wire brush as I have been doing just to get a bit of the rust off and then I'm going to use my newly bought from yesterday, I've recently stocked up on the WD-40 for this brand new project, the first project of Fred the Shed. The trike looks pretty cute down there now 
I think that's all up quite nicely, just quite a fun little thing. I'm not exactly sure what to do with that to be honest, but it's alright because Dad gave it to me for free. But as soon as I finish that, I've only gone and bought something else off Dad. <laughs> what have I done? This is an old Castrol oil dispenser and I think I might have a little go at doing a bit of a sympathetic restoration of this. It's absolutely caked in mud. Just had a little go. Screwdriver is probably the best tool because this stuff is caked on pretty, pretty badly. But hopefully the original paint should be all right. I might scrape that off the HY because this was originally, I believe, a high point. But I'll probably just take that stick off. Might try and find another stick for it. I don't know yet. But yeah, I think this will be a good... You see, that's also very, very crusty around there. Might have a little go at seeing what we can do with restoring this old Castrol oil dispenser. Gloopy. Good thing is though, look how lovely that paint is under there. Just shows how well oil preserves paint and yeah. metal underneath, doesn't it? You can see the bottom, the paint is sort of on here as well. The top, the paint is all flaking off because that bit hasn't been caked in oil. Mm. But here it's just mint, isn't it? That's it. One of the best preserved cars I ever had was that little A35, do you remember the van with the windows, the green one? You've had many A35 vans. <laughs> yeah, but that one, and that had about a quarter of an inch of grease underneath it that had been caked on it. And uh, underneath that it was like new, it was incredible. It works, doesn't it? It does. You hardly ever see a rusty oil can. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's not had oil in it for a long time. True. Well, how nicely is that coming along? I've cleaned up all of the top, all of the sort of little nooks and crannies in here. All looking quite nice if the camera would do me a favour and focus in on it. But I think, to be honest, that's pretty much the top done. So now I'm going to start moving to the side. I've done this side and it's just coming up so nicely. Who would have thought when it was sort of caked in gunge and God only knows what, it would just look come up like this because oil preserves it so nicely. The paint is just so beautiful. It's in really nice condition. Such a shame that this bit is so sort of rusty, but certainly the main body of it. Just look at the paint, it's incredible. This sticker I'm probably not going to worry about because you can't see anything of that. I might put, try and find another similar sticker, maybe off like I say Ding Dong or something. So now I'm going to work on making the rest of its sort of body look just like that because that has just come up so, so nicely. There you go, the main body of this gorgeous old oil dispenser all cleaned up still don't really know what to do with this bit because it is very very rough all of this would come off if i wanted to say spray it or something but certainly all this will be keeping it original i know all for keeping things original but this sticker here is just a bit pointless isn't it so i might try and find another sticker perhaps like an old style sticker that just comes off by nail actually so i could actually get that all off fairly easily but to be honest i'm astounded by how solid this is it's so so clean all around it. it's nice to have all the original gear with it which is a bit annoying when you got this flapping around and fed the shed here but it is very very nice i reckon this one might well be a keeper because it is just a very very nice thing and one thing that is encouraging is this little cap here it's actually brass and that could look quite good when it's all rubbed down i've literally just rubbed over it with a cloth can't really do it one-handed very well, but that looks like it could come up very, very nicely indeed. Now that there is just the definition of lovely patina. How lovely is that? I've been beckoned in to behold these very, very homemade looking mince pies that mum's just produced. Looking very, very rustic, oozing with character and mince. Very nice. Another addition to Fred the Shed is a couple of old lovely lubrication charts. These are from Dad's collection which he has kindly donated. A couple of my favourite cars here. We've got a Triumph GT6 lubrication cart, original Castrol lubrication chart that fits in very, very nicely in there. And then an E-Type 1 which is probably a bit wishful thinking, as is the GT6 to be honest. But they're there with the coolest cars out of the lot. So I think they look pretty, pretty cool there. Exactly the sort of thing you'd see in any sort of 60s, 70s garage. And that's of course the idea we're going for with Fred the Shed. And then we've got our lovely little oil dispenser. Restored in about half a day. It's so, so clean that I absolutely love that thing. I think it looks quite good in that corner. I'm just astounded by how clean it is. It's incredible. I 
I really do love that oil dispenser. Another addition is we went to an antique centre yesterday and I bought this lovely old sign, although it is probably made yesterday. This is quite clearly a repro sign for Morris Motor Houses worthy of your car. Came from an antique centre with a grand sum of £12, which I thought wasn't bad for quite a big sign like that. I think I'll put it there. I just like this because I'm not really a repro signs guy, but I like repro signs that are a bit different, that aren't just like Castrol or Shell. So I've got the Marvella set one there, and the Pierce Arrow, that's an older repro, so that actually looks like a proper old one. So yeah, th that was why I bought this. I thought it was quite a unique design, and I sort of need to fill up some of the wall space, like I did with those lubrication charts here in Fred the Shed, so I think that will very soon be hung up there. So to be honest, I think within reason, Fred the Shed is looking pretty finished, but of course we can't forget Ned, who has been ravaged of all those tools, there's blank spaces everywhere, stuff all over the floor, so I think we're going to have to sort out some of this. Ned is back to his former self, with all pretty much of the wall space taken up, just put a number plate and a sign there, a few more tins dotted around, just a bit of rearranging really, just to make him look full, even though already does look pretty full already still going to do a couple bit more I don't really know what to do with that tire I might get rid of it I don't know because that's where I keep my sort of biking stuff in and also I don't know what to do with this Michelin sign because it's very very faded but I'm going to keep those for now and you may notice a missing space and the uh, dedicated viewers to this channel will recognize these beautiful old Duff Norton 5 jacks these were both bought at a car boot last year I did make a very, very good video about how I restored these, but to be honest, they're looking a bit dry at the moment, and I want to preserve these beautiful old things. They're really, really lovely things. Really clever design. Five tons, so very, very heavy for this table. And then you flip that to there, then that comes down. And I will show you the quick release mechanism but I'll only have it very low for that. So that for that, the quick release, this is the same with both jacks, push that to there, that goes up. Never mind, I haven't done it right. There we go, that, that was sort of the quick release. I'm just trying to be very careful on my old table here. This is what the quick release does. Never mind, why is it not working? There we go, that was the quick release, but it is a very, very heavy lump and I don't want to damage my table too much. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to delve into my lovely new collection of rags and we will give these a bit of a spruce up with some WD-40. I really, really do love these beautiful old Duff Norton jacks, such sort of beautiful high quality things. When they're heavy, you can tell they're really, really high quality. So, so reliable. These could still be used for anything, probably up to about seven tons or something, because five tons, probably a little bit conservative. That one's looking lovely, nice and oiled up. This one's looking a little bit dry. This one looks really, really lovely when it's oiled up. It's got a bit of blue, blue and a bit of black paint, which is just the perfect amount. It looks so, so lovely. It's even got the Duff Barrett, which is the model of Jack, I believe, the Duff Norton Barrett Jack, um, sort of inscribed, or like, what's it called when letters raised? I don't know. On the top of the Jack there, which is really nice, and that survived. They're just beautiful, beautiful old things. This one is of the same design, so we go there to go up. This one's actually a little bit better. And then we put the thing to there to go down. Obviously, it'd have a bit of weight on it. And then if I go up an extra one, it's hard to do this one-handed, but we've got the quick release, which I'm sort of having to... That's not really working. It's hard to hold a camera while doing this, you know. There we go. I, I don't want to do the quick release from like all the way up here, because it just go boom and wreck my desk or something. So I think now, after that sort of slightly sort of anti-climax of the quick release, trust me, it does work, I think we'll oil up this one as well. Those are now back in their place. These will be staying in Ned the Shed very nicely oiled up next to my Austin seven wheel and a cutaway of a red X sign that would have been absolutely stunning but it only says red now but it looks cool doesn't it those all there but I think to be honest regarding Fred the Shed we're pretty much done so I think now let's have a little sort of stock take of what's actually in there and what I really really like in here 
So first of all, we've got to start with this beautiful old Michelin sign. This is not really a sign, this is cardboard. It would have been over a bike tire and it just looks absolutely lovely. Great patina and quite a rare sign. I saw the other one that I said I might get rid of that came from the same place. I've had these for years, I don't even know where they came from. And it's just a really, really nice looking thing. I've got my huge spirit level here. This has got some very nice old stickers on it. That's just a great thing, isn't it? Empire Rabone. I believe it's got stickers on the other side. There you go. It does work as well. Camera focus. That's just a really, really, really nice old tool and exactly the sort of thing I want for this shed. Got an old lamp here. That's quite cool. Another drill. Very nice. This drill over here is especially nice as it's got a little label. It's just in really nice condition. Got my Kenlite Roadmenders lamp here. That's also very, very nice. Moving on, we have the lovely and very, very rusty Fisk Tyres sign. If we look at that bit, it looks absolutely lovely. That bit, not quite so good, but it is quite cool and it has its own charm. We've got the Morris Repro sign, lovely adjustable spanner. That's a really nice shape, isn't it? All my drills hanging up on the top here, all very, very lovely, aren't they? And actually do use them. This is probably my favourite. It's a flot drill. It's got a couple of lovely labels. Hopefully you can see that on the screen. Moving over here, we've got the Castrol lubrication charts, looking very, very lovely. And here is the gorgeous oil dispenser. I really, really love this. It's still got some high point oil in it. And I think I will buy some Castrol stickers to go on there, maybe age it up just a little bit with, like, I don't know, some fine sandpaper or something, just to make it look not too new. And if anyone sort of... I'd love to hear what you think in the comments of sort of what's your preferred type of restoration. So I could have stripped this all back, repainted it, and put new stickers on it, but actually it did turn out to be quite solid, so... Viewer behind your screen watching me yakking on about old tools, do you prefer unrestored things, or like oily rag things, or do you prefer them all clean and exactly how they would have been in period, or as if they'd been left outside and a little bit rusty and a little bit patinated like that old lamp? I'd love to hear what you think in the comments below. A couple of little tins there, they're not that nice looking, but they look alright there. This is a really cute little oil, not oil, spirit level. It's got a little ruler on the side, really lovely little thing that. Homemade as well, perhaps like an apprentice piece, I don't know. Got a clipper drill, that's one of my favourites, one of my first drills I bought before I went drill crazy. But I'm not buying any more drills, don't worry. That's quite a nice one. Toolbox here, nice record vice. Here we've got the two repro signs, that was an older repro. A couple of saws, that one's especially nice. Got the Handicraft tool set, that's a gorgeous, gorgeous old thing. It just looks great with all these tools. These did not come with it, these are my own tools. I just put the sort of little stuff inside it which looks absolutely fantastic. That's only about £10, that was a nice bark and it's got that sticker on the outside as well. But I won't shut it because all this will come falling down and a lot of dangerous things and crazy things will happen. Here we've got a lovely little Lake and Elliot Jack, beautiful oily rag condition. Really nice and original. That was a Christmas present, your typical Christmas present, I guess. Here I've got my new boat in, which I keep all my sort of clips and nails and self-tapping screws. Grease guns, really old one there, a nice old brass one. Got a fuel pump repair kit here, another new boat in, an oil can, and a very lovely old tape measure. This is actually usable, it does still, can still read all the measurements of it, which is very handy, so I will actually be using that, and I have used it before. Next to my table here, filling up this space, I've got a War Department jerry can from 1965. This one is, I will oil that one up as it's looking a bit dry. Here I've got my little tool stores box, that came from the Gorsworth car show in the Auto Jumble, standard 8 and 10 instruction book, gorgeous Humber spanner, that's probably my favourite spanner ever. And then a few more spanners in there, those are some of my Austin and Ford branded spanners. Oil cans here, this one came from Eccleshaw Show, as did with this one, someone with a very nice old caravan, kindly sold those to me and Dad bought a K's can. I've also got another K's can here. These are sort of cans that I've amassed over time, they're beautiful old things aren't they? This is one of my favourites as well, this one here, really really nice early oil can that came from a market. And the little Wesco cans there looking very cute. On this row are the oil cans I actually do use. This one's an especially nice one with a little bit of brass. A couple of shell tins, that one actually did come from an old garage. Ferrodo brake shoes, a couple of little extra Wesco cans, roll plugs boxes as you do, and a few sort of assorted bits and bobs down here as well. 
So yes, we really have ended 2023, a great year for car traction, with a bang, with my brand new shed, Fred the Shed. I'd like to give a final thanks to everyone who's commented, liked, subscribed and watched my videos, because that has funded these huge projects like this, and of course has funded the Ned the Shed collection. So huge, huge thank you, please do keep watching, and I think that's just about it from this huge update at car traction. Comment below what you thought and what your opinions on restoring old bits of automobilia are. For subscribe, check the channel homepage for similar videos and the videos of restoring these old jacks and bye for now don't go just yet have a little quick look at my latest edition i just bought this uh old like boat or like remote control plane fan from dad mounted it on the wall and now i can have fun spinning that round all nice and polished up and very very lovely and fun for when you're bored and now this is the proper end of the video thanks for watching